example, how many of us know someone who believes they have all the answers to a controversial issue because they've read an article or watched a video or someone with letters after their name claimed to know the truth? But the American Psychological Association writes, people are capable of being thoughtful and rational, but our wishes, our hopes, our fears, and our motivations often tip the scale to make us more likely to accept something as true if it supports what we want to believe. In other words, what we believe to be true is what shapes and forms our thinking and our personality. Conspiracy theories are entertaining because they attempt to connect the dots through unlikely historical events. They attempt to bring order to chaos. But Paul instructs Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and makes some very clear charges about those who are in Ephesus, not to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which lead to speculation. He goes on to say that they don't understand either what they are saying or the things about which they are making confident assertions. Furthermore, he instructs Titus in the book that bears his name in chapter 3 with a list of good works that should accompany a believer in Jesus. And he concludes by saying, these things are excellent and profitable for people, but avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Arguably, one of the greatest problems with conspiracy theories is that they place too much emphasis on worldly matters. It's good for political corruption to come to light, but it is not a necessary condition for the Christian life. It is right for corruption of all kinds to be brought to justice, but it is still possible to live a godly life even if justice never happens. Is what you spend your time on profitable and worthy of what God has called you and me to do? And that is to make disciples and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Let me express to you for just a moment with all that we are facing in our current culture, in our world today, that we should not fear. The Bible tells us over 300 times not to fear. Many conspiracies feed on fear, sorrow, and intimidation to drive their agenda. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Exposing the truth is good. Obsessing over rumors and internet or social media based theories is harmful. Paul goes on to write, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they are, ba are bred in quarrels and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. Endless speculation about conspiracy theories is, at best, a waste of time. And at worst, the obsession induces paralyzing fear as our attention is drawn away from Christ. Avoid the mysteries God hasn't chosen to reveal yet and let him work according to his timing. Rest in his plan, which can never be thwarted.